Sheriffs across California are joining forces, opposing Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom's latest push to make the state's already extreme gun laws even more extreme. Newsom's ballot initiative would ban and confiscate all high-capacity magazines over 10 rounds and require background checks, the first in the country, to buy ammunition. But a letter from the State Sheriff's Association makes clear Newsom's scheme will do nothing to keep guns out of the hands of criminals, but they say it will create a new class of criminals, law-abiding citizens who are the only ones who ever follow these laws anyway. As Sheriff John McMahon told me, Newsom's new restrictions would have done nothing to stop the husband and wife terrorist team he says, quote, was prepared to wage war during their attack in San Bernardino when 14 people were killed and 21 others were wounded. Take a look. We want to create some common sense reforms that would protect the public. I don't think it's going to make any difference at all in violence in the state of California. California can set the tone for the rest of the nation. Certainly, the State Sheriff's Association and me personally are opposed to that. You're taking normal, law-abiding citizens and turning them into criminals. Laws are all in place. Felons are not supposed to have guns. We just need to focus on that and not create any new laws to try to restrict those that can legally possess firearms from doing so. We've already banned high-capacity magazines. However, when the law was passed, if you owned a high-capacity magazine that can accommodate more than 10 rounds of ammunition, you could continue to possess it. This initiative would force current owners of high-capacity magazines to sell them to a licensed gun dealer or give them to somebody in another state. This is just another piece of legislation that would create another bureaucracy in the state of California. And then for citizens to register and have a card and pay a fee to buy ammunition and then register every time they purchase that ammunition. I think that's overreach of government. I don't think it's going to make any difference at all. As a matter of fact, the majority of the suspects that I've dealt with over my career, when you find them in possession of a firearm, very rarely do you find a fresh box of ammunition. It's a mixed bag. I don't see the suspects involved in these crimes going to the gun store to buy ammunition. The California Department of Justice struggles with trying to keep up with who currently owns firearms, who's not supposed to have them. We don't have enough deputy sheriffs as it is to enforce the laws we have today. If you just pass another law, how are we gonna enforce it? Would any of those regulations that he's pushing, would any of them made a difference in stopping these two terrorists from doing what they did here in San Bernardino? No, these folks were not on anybody's radar. There was nothing to suggest that they would be banned from purchasing ammunition and or the firearms. Now we have two suspects, both dressed in black. Those two assault style weapons were purchased legally. Now they were purchased legally by somebody else and, and given to these two folks. And that's a matter of the investigation and prosecution that the federal government is doing. We have several down at a conference, several down. It was unspeakable, uh, the carnage that we were seeing. T to be honest, you guys, it was a little surreal. Whether it be the victims inside the building that were able to get out, those that were injured, that were carried out, nobody should have to see a scene like that. This is something that will impact them for the rest of their lives. San Bernardino PD in a shootout with an SUV. Although we in law enforcement train for these types of events, you certainly don't expect in San Bernardino to have a terrorist act, the largest terrorist act since 9-11. We can't lose sight of the 14 people that lost their lives and the well over 20 that were significantly injured. But there are evil people, and evil people will do evil things at no cost. The weapons that they had with them, the tactical type gear they were wearing, the bombs that they brought with them, as well as the, the extra ammunition, they were very, very well prepared to wage war. But it's my understanding there was nobody in that specific conference room that had a firearm. County employees, even if they have a CCW or carry a concealed weapon, cannot carry their firearm when they're at work doing county business. Now, the Board of Supervisors is talking about changing that rule, but I am very much in favor of folks having concealed weapons and carrying them legally in the county of San Bernardino.
The San Bernardino Police Department was on scene in four minutes. Now, four minutes is a long time if you're in a building where somebody's shooting at you, absolutely. Citizens have a right to protect themselves, and I think that's an important right. Matter of fact, inside of a business, you can carry an exposed firearm. It's not a problem. But I want them to be responsible. I want them to train and be familiar with that firearm so that in the event that they're faced with a situation where they may need it, they're very competent in their skills. And as a result of December 2nd, the number of folks that are interested in having a CCW has skyrocketed. We're trying to keep up with the backlog now. Areas where we can do more and strengthen our laws. Have you ever seen our rights and our individual freedoms under attack like they are right now? That really concerns me. I think it goes from gun control initiatives, challenging gun owners' rights, to the outright attack on law enforcement. I couldn't be more proud of the men and women of law enforcement in this county. The brave men and women that went into that building doing their very best to protect people. I'll take a bullet before you do, that's for damn sure. Just be cool, okay? It's nothing short of what any other person in law enforcement would do. I don't feel like a hero whatsoever. That's our job to put ourselves in the line of danger to protect the community. The stories of heroism that occurred on that day from the first responders is just incredible. And the stories just keep coming. They followed their training. They worked together seamlessly. And they neutralized the threat. How bad do you think the terror threat is in this country? Well, I believe there's going to be more of these attacks like we saw on December 2nd. I think this was a wake-up call for the citizens of this country. Terrorist acts can occur anywhere. But do some rants that, you know, um, we're not going to stop these mass shootings until somebody stands up to the NRA. You can intimidate politicians. We've seen that. Hell, you've been effective. But you can't intimidate the public. I'm not sure what the NRA has to do with mass shootings, to be honest with you. California has some of the strictest gun laws in the country. And we all know that if somebody wants a firearm, even if they can't legally purchase it, they steal them or get them from somebody else. And we see that regularly. And to impose any additional gun laws, I don't believe will make a difference. Do you think the Newsom ballot initiative will be defeated? The California state sheriffs have come out in opposition to that. And I think our responsibility as leaders in our community is to do our very best to prevent those rights from being eroded. My hope is that that the voters across this entire state do their homework. Those rights are clearly described in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. We need to do everything in our power to protect those rights. And my true belief is if you're not involved in the process, you really don't have any right to complain. Voice your opinion and vote.